most of the stuff that I remember is how close we came to not having the industry, how close it came to falling apart. Um, the uh, Hibernia well, the Hibernia discovery, was the last uh, well drilled in a series of wells, and if they didn't find something at that point, they were going to go home. So the industry could have stopped right there. And the excitement started with the rumors. The rumors were saying, hey, yeah, they found pockets of oil and gas, and, you know, very close on the on the continental shelf of Newfoundland. Oh, the euphoria. Uh, uh, I mean, people were mortgaging their houses to buy Gulf Canada stock. No question about it, when Hibernia was discovered, really, I guess it was 78, 79 period. And all of a sudden, we had oil. And, and the streets were awash with smoked salmon and malt whiskey. I mean, this was our first introduction to this. This was like, whoa, this is fantastic. And so, yes, there was tremendous energy as we saw the thing develop. As I said, in the early drilling days, it was phenomenal. You just got the feeling that if, if they were missing a, a spare part, they'd rent a 737 to go and get one because you just had to keep drilling. You had to keep turning to the right. And there was a recognition emerging amongst a relatively small handful of local businesses that this was in fact a very significant opportunity and if one wanted to uh, participate in that opportunity you had to get out, market yourselves, get to understand the industry, get to understand the, the nuances and the differences that existed in providing goods and services uh, to a, uh, an industry of this size and magnitude. We did establish the association to enable us collectively to benefit from the offshore. Um, as time went by, it grew and grew, and uh, of course now it's, uh, it's a, a huge successful organization. And I don't know that anybody ever dreamed it would be, it would be as successful as it has been. At the beginning, I know the five of us or so met about every two weeks just to get this up because the, 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 the people that accepted it, and it was all volunteer. Everybody came very excited, fully volunteer, fully committed. There was a lot of personal contacts involved in this, you know. Um, some of our members had contacts in the government, some had worked in the government in those days as well. And, um, and of course, uh, Rick was in the advertising business, and so I think that uh, they knew, they seemed to have known how to get around and how to, how to publicize what we were trying to do. The membership fees were quite reasonable too. The businesses kind of fed off of each other. Everybody knew that the opportunity was far, uh, in a way, bigger and, and, and better than any individual <coughs> operation. So the whole context or idea of an association emerged with relative ease. It wasn't um, anywhere near as popular or as important, um, Noya wasn't, as it is today. Actually, you could have a luncheon meeting and pretty much just fill up a table. So it wasn't, it wasn't that big a deal because nobody had any real understanding of how transformative the industry was going to be. Uh, we saw the money coming out of drilling, but nobody had any real understanding of the magnitude of the business. At the beginning, I don't think they, we saw how massive it was, but the good point about it is that everybody jumped on board. Memorial University jumped on board, of course, and the, the, the operators jumped on board, provincial government jumped on board, the federal government jumped on board. You know, Noya wouldn't exist, this industry wouldn't exist at all in Newfoundland and Labrador unless the federal government had been involved. They uh, put into effect in the uh, or late 70s, early 80s, the Petroleum Incentives Program, um, which was to encourage exploration drilling. As it turned out, it paid for nearly 90% of the costs of the original exploration offshore Newfoundland and Labrador. People tend to forget the role that, for instance, Brian Peckford paid. And, in arguing and, and winning the Atlantic Accord, and uh, uh, we cannot forget the role that John Crosby did in, in, in pulling uh, Hibernia out of the bag when, when Gulf Canada withdrew. After a year of marketing this project all around the world, there was eight and a half percent left and nobody wanted it. Then it looked like the project was going to crater. And I'm, you know, talking the last week before the thing got cancelled. Um, John Crosby and Brian Mulroney decided that they would step up to the plate and take an equity ownership in the project. So all the way through the process, the federal government has been a critical player, um, has come to bat for Newfoundland and Labrador tremendously, 
um, and invested in this and started up this industry. We've always had support from the government, obviously. We've seen over the, over the 40 years the ups and downs of the prices as well, you know. I mean, it's not the first time that oil's been down to half nothing and uh, it'll, it'll come back again. When I went to work in 79, the price of oil was $33 a barrel, predicted to go to $100 a barrel. By 1985, the price of oil went to $9 a barrel. The supply chain in this business is phenomenal. It just goes from top right down to the guy supp supplying office furniture. So when, when that happened in 85, all, everybody suffered. If we really understood how hard the whole thing was going to be, how hard it was going to be to get the industry up and running, and how hard it was going to be for us to figure out how to make a profit at it, we probably wouldn't have started. We would have gone done something simple. This technology sort of got us all excited and, and gave us some highs, like for instance, uh, horizontal drilling and uh, seismic methods changed. Uh, and, and a big one, I think, was subsea technology. Subsea technology really put a high in, in, uh, into, the, into the drilling and development of the offshore. The one that came later on uh, was, of course, the, the formation of NALCOR, NALCOR Energy. And NALCOR, with their commitments and their dedication to their geosciences programs, just really, and, and for years to come, I think their efforts will be is well appreciated and be around for a long time. Oh, I think that our, our future here is brilliant. Um, I think that we are at the beginning of the industry again. This feels very much like the early days. Um, suddenly, uh, we ground to a halt, boom, and Hebron's gonna go out uh, this year, uh, and nothing theoretically was looking great for the future until all of a sudden, people started making massive drilling commitments and you've seen uh, billions of dollars be committed now over the, for over the next 10 years. And seven new companies have come into the marketplace, large international oil and gas companies, over the last 18 months. We are the new north here in Newfoundland and Labrador. We're a pretty capable race of people. We're, uh, and we, we can adapt and we've taken our basic skills, particularly our marine skills, when you look at the uh, crews of the shuttle tankers, for instance, you look at the crews, they all were probably came either fisher people themselves or came from fishing family. So we're particularly good at marine related matters. And that's been our history, of course, since, since, you know, since John Cabot. I think sometimes the industry is a bit too modest. And uh, I think it would be important to continue to let people know uh, how important that this industry is uh, because it's going to be here for a long time and it's going to be very meaningful for future generations. I am hope I'm around <laughs> to have in 10 years time to be again part of Noya and, and uh, in the golden years and I'll say, hail Noya. <laughs>